This man is clearly by far the most gifted receiver who has ever come along in the history of this league. Holy shit. He really is 6'6". He really runs a 4-3, and he's really 240, every bit of it. Slants, catch, go balls, catch. Damn, whatever he wanted to run, it was a catch. <laughs> if Stafford feel like nobody would open, Calvin open. He throwing it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There are plenty of legendary NFL receivers, but none have been as dominant as Calvin Johnson. And Megatron's legendary run with the Detroit Lions was just the final step in proving that he was simply unguardable. Because from the very first time he put on a helmet, he was already dominating. Johnson was born and raised in the outskirts of Atlanta by a family that prioritized their son getting a strong education. But considering Johnson was six feet tall in middle school, it became clear he had a special frame and a once-in-a-lifetime talent. Johnson went on to play for Sandy Creek High School, where he racked up an impressive 1,479 receiving yards and 18 TDs for the Patriots. He quickly garnered attention from college scouts, and college recruiting giant Rivals.com named him the top player in Georgia for the 2004 class. Despite his growing profile, Johnson committed to his hometown school, Georgia Tech, and suiting up for the Yellow Jackets allowed Johnson to play at the highest level, while also getting his education from one of the top schools in the Southeast. Then, in just his first few games with Georgia Tech, it was clear that the young Megatron was a problem. In his second-ever collegiate game, Johnson tore up Clemson's secondary for 127 receiving yards and three touchdowns to lead a 28-24 victory. ACC defenses had a new monster to deal with, but Johnson was just getting started. He was named the ACC Rookie of the Year, totaling 837 receiving yards and seven touchdowns. Johnson followed up with an almost identical campaign to make the first-team All-ACC list for a second year running. But both of those seasons were just teasers compared to his monstrous 2006 campaign. Johnson seemingly made history each week, bringing down 76 receptions for 1,202 receiving yards and 15 touchdowns. That season, Megatron was named the ACC Player of the Year, the winner of the Fred Boletnikoff Award for Best Collegiate Receiver, and set Georgia Tech records for most all-time receiving yards and touchdown receptions. After clearly establishing himself as the best receiver in college football, Johnson could only go up. So he decided to forego his senior season and announced his plans to enter the NFL draft. Almost instantly, Johnson was projected to go in the top five picks, and the insane hype only grew once he completed his combine testing, where he ran a 4-3-5 40-yard dash despite weighing 235 pounds and measuring in at 6 foot 5. That kind of speed is unheard of for a player that size. Even with his freakish athleticism, Johnson actually went second overall to the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions take wide receiver Calvin Johnson, Georgia Tech. After the Oakland Raiders took LSU QB Jamarcus Russell first, Russell became infamous for being one of the biggest draft busts of all time, so passing on Megatron was a major blunder. However, the Lions, in typical Lions fashion, were also initially planning to trade away the once-in-a-lifetime wide receiver after drafting him. It's one of the modern NFL's great what-if moments, because while the Lions ultimately made the right decision in keeping Johnson for the long haul, for Megatron, he was joining Detroit right as they entered the greatest low in franchise history. And this is a franchise with a lot of lows. But after 756 receiving yards and four touchdowns in a solid rookie campaign in 2007, Johnson was the only saving grace on the 2008 Lions. Detroit went 0-16 that season, becoming the only team in NFL history to lose 16 games in a single season. But what was a terrible season for the team was a great season for Calvin Johnson. He brought down 78 receptions for a whopping 1,300 331 receiving yards, despite catching passes from three different quarterbacks throughout the season. He also had 12 receiving touchdowns, which led the NFC. Yet somehow he was still not named to the Pro Bowl or the All-Pro teams. For his first two seasons, Johnson was stuck on a bad Lions roster that had a rotating cast at QB. But in 2009, there was hope in Detroit, because they used their first overall pick in the draft to take QB Matthew Stafford, finally giving Johnson a franchise QB to build with. In 2009, 
2009, Megatron put up 1,000 total scrimmage yards in Stafford's rookie season, but the Stafford-Johnson connection didn't properly begin due to the Lions' QB injury and development issues. Stafford played in just 10 games as a rookie, and then in 2010, he played in just three games. And he wasn't performing well either when he did play, throwing 21 interceptions over the 13 games that he suited up. But despite having a rotating set of QBs during Stafford's second season, Johnson still caught 77 passes for 1,120 receiving yards and 12 touchdowns to make his first Pro Bowl in his fourth NFL season. After all the losses and several different quarterbacks, Megatron had proven to the NFL that it didn't matter who was throwing to him, he was going to make plays. And in 2011, when Stafford was healthy and NFL ready, the Lions' situation shifted dramatically. Johnson could finally reach his potential with one of the strongest arms in NFL history. And Johnson's ascension into Megatron's status had truly begun. Despite Johnson's great 2010 season and the potential of a healthy Stafford, expectations were minimal. This was still a Lions franchise that was just a few years removed from a winless season. But Detroit quickly put the NFL world on notice. Megatron exploded into the season for the Lions as they won their opener against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, going off for 80 Eight receiving yards and two touchdowns. That was just the first taste of how untouchable Johnson could be. Over the first four games of the season, Johnson caught two touchdown passes in each game. Even when his total yards would dip, like his three catches for 27 yards in the Week 2 win over the Kansas City Chiefs, he still brought in two scores. His second straight two-touchdown game, he's got four TDs. In the red zone, just throw it up to Calvin and let him eat. The Lions were 5-0 after five games, but Megatron's numbers were even more impressive than the win streak. Johnson had racked up 451 receiving yards and nine touchdowns, the kind of stats that an average NFL receiver would be pleased with for his entire season. After a booming start, Detroit and Johnson went 2-5 over their next seven contests. But Johnson was still performing at an elite level, averaging over 91 yards per game and adding another three touchdowns. Detroit wasn't living or dying by Megatron. Megatron, he was just producing, regardless, like he had done his entire career. Johnson continued to be a dominant presence on the field as Detroit turned their season back around to finish with a 10-6 record. And when looking at the most unguardable stretch of his career, it starts at the end of the 2011 season. In Week 15, Johnson did something exceedingly rare, crossing the 200-yard mark for a receiver, with 214 receiving yards and two touchdowns on nine receptions. Only a small percentage of receivers have reached that total, and only a fraction of those receivers have done it multiple times. So, because one time wasn't enough, Megatron did it again in Week 17, with a monstrous regular season finale with 244 receiving yards and a touchdown. Then, Johnson made his postseason debut the following week against the New Orleans Saints by putting up another breathtaking performance with 211 receiving yards and two touchdowns in a 45-28 loss. For starters, that is the seventh most receiving yards in a playoff game ever, and Megatron did it in his first playoff game. Plus, he caught over 200 receiving yards three times in a four-game stretch. He finished the season with 1,681 receiving yards and 16 touchdowns. And any NFL fan that wasn't aware of Johnson's ability had no choice but to respect how incredible he was now as he was named a first-team All-Pro for the first time in addition to making the Pro Bowl. Johnson's 2011 season was one for the ages, and it's almost too bad that it was immediately overshadowed by his even more memorable record-breaking season in 2012. Now that NFL defenses knew how good Johnson was, opposing coordinators and coaches did everything they could to stop him. But Johnson was a man on a mission and Megatron proved that in Week 1, picking up right where he left off with 111 receiving yards against the St. Louis Rams. However, the first half of Johnson's season was not the memorable part of his 2012 campaign. It was still impressive because the Lions legend went over the 100-yard mark three times in seven games, but a lot of great receivers can put up those numbers. And Megatron was not just another great receiver, he was different. And those who didn't know that found out starting in Week 9. What followed was something the NFL had literally never seen. Eight straight games with 100-plus receiving yards. It was a new league record, and one that still stands. Johnson rattled off game after game of being simply unguardable, setting a record-breaking pace along the way. 
Over those eight games, Johnson racked up 1,254 receiving yards and added four touchdowns. Essentially, Megatron put up all pro numbers in the span of a half season. And what's possibly the most wild about that run is how bad the Lions were. Detroit went 1-7 in that span and would end up losing their final eight games of the season on their way to a 4-12 record. Entering the final two games of the season, Megatron was sitting at 1,667 receiving yards. Hall of Fame Jerry Rice's seemingly untouchable single-season receiving yards record, 1,841, was in reach, and Johnson had two weeks to reach it. Johnson exploded in Week 16, totaling 225 receiving yards in a monstrous performance. Megatron into the record books, the single-season all-time NFL receiving yardage record. Now, a new goal appeared. 2,000 receiving yards, a total that no NFL receiver had ever reached, and Johnson came incredibly close. Stafford to Calvin Johnson, 90 yards away from 2,000 now. The Detroit icon could only catch five passes for 72 yards. It wasn't due to a lack of trying, though, as Stafford threw 14 passes at Johnson, but just could not get on target. We can't catch a play, dog. The Lions lost a tight 26-24 game to the Chicago Bears for their eighth straight loss, only rubbing more salt in the wound. But there was no question about Megatron's season. It was the most incredible single-season receiving performance in NFL history. He totaled 1,964 receiving yards, an NFL record that still stands today. He was also named a first-team All-Pro for the second straight season. And while 2012 was the best season of Johnson's career, his greatest game actually came the following year. By 2013, Megatron putting up well over a thousand receiving yards each season had become normalized. But what wasn't normal was totaling over 300 yards in a single game. In a 31-30 barn burner win over the Dallas Cowboys, Johnson caught a staggering 14 passes for 329 yards and a touchdown. The performance ranks as the second all-time in terms of total receiving yards in a game, and Megatron would not stop there. Because in 2013, he put up 1,492 receiving yards and 12 touchdowns in just 14 games. It was the third consecutive year he he averaged over 100 yards per game, and his third straight season as a first-team All-Pro, one of the most dominant three-year stretches the NFL has ever seen. The following season, in 2014, he only played in 13 games, but still put up 1,077 receiving yards. Then, coming into 2015, fans would have never expected that Johnson was approaching the end of his career. He was not far removed from his record-breaking years, and he was still consistently going over the 1,000-yard mark. Even in 2015, Johnson totaled 1,214 receiving yards and nine touchdowns, but he had reached his limit. After setting countless franchise and league records, on March 8, 2016, Megatron officially announced that he would be hanging it up after nine NFL seasons. Despite only missing eight games, in his entire career, the physical toll the game took on his body had become too much. Johnson later stated that the team refused to trade him, and their inability to compete for a championship also played into his decision. Johnson played in just two playoff games in his nine-year career. But even without a team around him, Megatron always found a way to ball out. And because of this, in his first year of eligibility, Johnson was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, immortalized as the most unguardable player the league has ever seen. And if you want more of the greatest NFL stories, click this video right here. And subscribe to Blitz so you never miss a video again.